Welcome to TR for Let's Talk. I'm your host, Swapnil Bhartia, and my next guest is Kendall Nelson, upstream developer advocate at Open Infrastructure Foundation. Kendall, it's great to have you on the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here today. If we look at your involvement at the foundation, you are more or less focused on onboarding new developers. Uh, before we talk about your role and onboarding and all those things, I would love to know a bit about your own background. Can you talk about yourself? Yeah, uh, so I've been involved in open source for probably about six years now. Um, I originally had uh, started at IBM after I graduated from the University of Minnesota. And there I immediately started working on OpenStack and got involved in the community there and have loved every minute of it. I actually was hired by the Open Stack Foundation, which is now the Open Infrastructure Foundation, um, like four and a half, five years ago now. So I've been in open source for quite a while and, and gotten involved in other projects other than Open Stack too. Over the last couple of years, I've been involved in Kubernetes and some of the communities in between the two. Uh, so it's been great. Yeah, and that very you know well ties with your role there at the foundation. I want to understand because you said you know from the very early on you got involved with open source. There are two things when we look at employees or developers who work for companies. We like hey you know you should get involved with open source. At the same time, there are a lot of people who get who are kind of attracted towards open source for a lot of reasons. So can you talk about the both aspect? One is that why developers get involved. Uh, with open source, they start contributing on their own. And why should companies kind of encourage their developers to get involved? Open source, I think, is really valuable to both uh, like individual contributors and companies themselves, like you were saying. Um, as an individual contributor, it gives you a enormous network of people to learn from, to talk to, to network with, to like make friends with. And um, it teaches you a lot of communication skills and gives you a um, like public resume, basically, of all of the things that you've uh, done for projects, both code, documentation, all kinds of different things. As a company, it's really um, beneficial to be involved in open source because the code that you are presumably using that's been cloned from some open source repository um, is going to be a lot better tested than anything you probably develop in-house because the number of other companies involved are also going to be testing vigorously. And um, also you're going to have a lot of different use cases. So it's going to all those different like weird little issues you think you might run into are not going to be as big of a problem. And when you do run into problems, there is a much larger community that you can rely on that aren't just your you know, team of 10 people that have been working on this piece of software. You have a hopefully global community like OpenStack to fall back on when you need help. I also want to talk a bit about uh, when you talk about getting involved or contributing to open source, uh, code is not the only way you can contribute. And, and the fact is that sometimes companies use or get involved with open source for so many reasons. Not everybody has all the resources, all the developer time that they can contribute. So what are the ways where companies can encourage their teams to get involved with open source, give things back, being good citizens, which can be beyond just uh, contributing to the code? Um, so it largely depends on the community what they identify as a, a contribution but everything from code like you say to you know triaging bugs or even reporting bugs um, that might be affecting other people that are also using open source software is a really good way to contribute back to the community any documentation things that you see if your users have an issue um, something they don't understand that could be better documented. That's a really great way to help out. But even community management sort of roles like running technical elections, if the community has elected roles or various other governance positions are really, really helpful too. Right. 
Yeah, I look at it like I, there are a couple of C's, you know, either you contribute through code, you you know, of course, you can also do a lot of things in communication, like marketing, you can, uh, about those, but you can also kind of through currency by hiring developers who are working on those projects in their, you know, but they work for you. So there are so many ways companies can get involved. Now, let's talk about uh, your, your role at Open, you know, Infrastructure Foundation. As, uh, when you look at just onboarding itself, um, uh, what has been your experience so far? Because open source has kind of become, if not the default, that preferred model of development. So a lot of developers, they already know how things work. But if you can share uh, your experience when you do you know, run these onboarding sessions, um, what kind of challenges or questions you most often uh, hear from from new developers who are getting on board? So the, the onboarding sessions that we run, it's called um, OpenStack Upstream Institute. That's specific to OpenStack. The, the Open Infrastructure Foundation has a lot of projects beyond OpenStack these days, but I work primarily with OpenStack, so I'll keep to those examples. Um, so Upstream Institute, um, we run it around the time of events. Obviously, lately, that's been a little bit different uh, since we don't have in-person events, but a lot of the questions are mostly like basic, how do I, like, where do I start? I don't know what resources to go look at. I don't know who to talk to. And so I've spent a lot of time trying to build up and publicize those resources. So we have a contributor guide that covers everything from like code and documentation fixes to how to get involved if you're more of like a user or an operator, um, things that you can do in those different roles. And we've also tried to build a um, like network of people to call upon for help if you have questions when you're getting started. And that group is called the First Contact SIG. I am one of the chairs of that SIG at this point. And um, basically we're there to help get you to the right place. If we don't know the answer to your question, we definitely know somebody that can answer it. And I think that that's a really important thing to understand in general is that there is no one person that has all of the answers in any open source community. You you need to know who knows, and that's where you're you'll be the most successful. So we try to help people with that. I also want to understand a bit about you know what kind of uh, folks that you come across. Of course, we are talking about OpenStack. We are talking about building infrastructure. So we are not looking at you know just you know greenhorn developers who are just interested in open source. You no, know, they are the ones who are interested in building infrastructure. But if I ask you, you know, uh, tell us what kind of student do you see, or do you also see people from a specific region, countries? It actually varies a lot, a lot more than you would think. Um, when we run Upstream Institute at the summits, we get a lot of people that are like, have been told by their company, you should go work on this project. Um, but we also get a lot of project managers and uh, like more management type people that just want to understand how contribution works. And then they bring it back to their teams at their company and, and educate them or then are like, you should also go to Upstream Institute and then they go to like the next one. But some other locations that we've held it um, at individual open stack days or open infrastructure days, like globally, uh, have been really fun. There was a, a student that came well, <laughs> there was a student that came to a session at uh, an OpenStack day in Vietnam, and he actually brought his eight-year-old brother. And by the end of the day, the eight-year-old brother was also contributing to OpenStack. So it, it's really a wide variety of backgrounds and um, professions and geographic diversity, everything. So <laughs> lots. Yeah, I also want to talk about this aspect is that uh, uh, Traveling to physical events does become challenging for visa. A lot of you know financial, a lot of things are there. But with online, anybody can do it from anywhere they want. And OpenStack has a large user community outside of US. So can you talk about how do you kind of maintain a balance there? Geographic diversity definitely is a huge problem in our global community, and I expect all open source communities that are global communities. So. One of the primary things that OpenStack specifically tries to do is make all of their meetings text-based. So it's easier to um, 
go and attend the meeting. If you don't speak English first, you might be able to read English better uh, or feel more comfortable reading and typing in English than actually speaking. So we um, hope that that helps lower the barrier. Uh, but also all of those meetings are then logged and um, can be looked at later. Uh, so if you happen to be asleep or half asleep while you're attending the meeting and, and don't remember what happened, you can go back and look all of that up. One of the best things or uh, good things with open source is that anybody can, you know, see the code in the repositories. There's a lot of documentation uh, out there. A lot of YouTube videos are there, so you can get it started on your own. Uh, that is fine, but you know, but working in a in a in a in a company environment or a corporate environment, working on production is challenging. So I would also want to ask you a bit about uh, what role do you see of uh, training, uh, certification, and also moving these things in 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 in, in very early age during the student days at universities or other institutions. Can you talk about this aspect of open source where you are actually working on a mission critical infrastructure? Of course, I I actually one of my favorite parts of my role at the Open Infrastructure Foundation is the relationships that we have with university students. So I have spent um, at least two years now working with North Dakota State University, um, Oregon State University, and re more recently, Boston University as well. They either have internship programs in their open source labs, or they have um, university courses that students can take where they are given the option to work on various open source projects. And we've volunteered to help mentor students a number of times now, and that's been so much fun. And I also really appreciate that those programs have been able to continue um, through the, the virus this last year, um, since we haven't had the, the in-person trainings that I also really enjoy. Um, we also are involved in um, the Outreachy program that's hosted by the Software Freedom Conservancy. They're excellent at building diversity into open source projects, and we love participating in that uh, every, every season. And there's also uh, events like Grace Hopper um, that have open source days that are dedicated to getting more university students involved in open source. So lots of things, so much fun. <laughs> this question might kind of sound awkward to you because you bumped into open source, you started your open source journey without anybody kind of doing a very clear handholding. But if I ask if somebody is interested in open source, uh, uh, especially if you look at OpenStack uh, project or the Open Infrastructure Foundation, what are the first steps, you know, how they can get involved? And also, should they worry about, hey, I know about open source already, or hey, I have no clue about it? So the, the contributor guide that we have is really a good place to start. It has all of the information you need to get, you know, communicating with the community, get your environment set up and like how to hook in to the community, understand the governance and find somebody to help you find a bug or go find a bug on your own to get started on. And um, that's located at docs.openstack.org slash contributors. Um, and if that doesn't work, you know, going and just like asking a question on IRC or on the mailing list, um, the first contact SIG is constantly watching IRC channels and the mailing list looking for new contributors and will help you find the right place. So we're, uh, we're also trying to build up these programs in other open infrastructure foundation projects like Starling X and Kata and Airship. So keep an eye out for all of those improvements in the future. Uh, 2020 was, you know, a tough year for everybody because of pandemic, which not only, you know, uh, disrupted a lot of the ways we work, but also the way we uh, interact, you know, uh, and get together. Uh, so how much did it affect your onboarding sessions or it was all online virtual, so it did not impact you or what lessons you learned from it, which actually was good also. Like you don't have to bring everybody in the same room. You can interact with people globally. So so can you talk about what has been your experience and what it taught you? Hey, these are the things that we should do so that our community does not suffer. 2020 was uh, definitely eye-opening. We um, like are used to working remotely because we're a global community and no one can be everywhere at, month, at once. 
the world's not flat, <laughs> all of those issues that you run into. So we were dealing with a lot of that already, but not being able to have in-person events was really hard just because um, the sense of community, uh, it, it's really hard to keep that strong and keep those connections healthy and thriving. So we started doing more um, like one-off game days together and tried to uh, add those into our virtual events. Um, like the the project team gathering, for example, we would have a, a game evening and some of the individual projects also organized happy hours. Um, with regards to onboarding and training stuff, we have tried to reach more platforms and audiences. So that's where we've gotten involved with the Grace Hopper conference a lot more and found other opportunities to run the training online so that we can keep growing our community and reaching out to more folks. But I look forward to getting back in person. Excellent. Kendall, thank you so much for taking time out today. And, and we, we talked about some of the basics of open source, why people get involved and why they should get involved. Uh, specifically, uh, uh, the way you talked about onboarding at uh, Open Interactive Foundation and OpenStack. Uh, thanks for your time today. And I'd love to have you back on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Have a good day.